What you're proud of tells you something. We're rarely proud of the things that come easy to us. The most difficult things are what teach us the most. This year I've achieved something that I'm really proud of. Possibly the most difficult thing I've made, creatively and personally. Making it happen has meant finding new ways of doing things and it has changed how I think about the creative process and why I think it's so important for us to be making things. I wanted to share with you some of the things I've learned. Uh, maybe there'll be something useful here for you if you're dealing with stuff like loss or grief or if you're going through a crap time in life and you're trying to find a way to respond to that creatively. So first up, feeling the need. The need for speed, just joking. 2017, 2018 was a really crap time in my life. I was burned out from making stuff, theatre projects. Then we found out our mum was ill and she suddenly died. Soon after that, uh, my relationship broke up and that began a period for me of breakdown really. There's no other way of putting it and feeling quite, quite lost. Time passed and eventually I felt ready to create something that responded to my whole experience. I also wanted to radically rethink my creative process. Despite being a writer, I wanted to be the performer of this story, whatever it was going to be. For the first time, I wanted and needed to tell an explicitly autobiographical story. And I wanted to experience a new way of writing instead of just being sat at a keyboard, smashing my head against the screen, waiting for the story to come out. Awesome, let's do it! Then COVID happened. We all had to stay home. Everything stopped. Trusting your process. I knew I wanted to change up the way of making stuff, the way I wrote stuff. I had this idea that I wanted this studio-based devising experience of writing where it's playing around with ideas with other people in a space, which isn't really possible when you're locked down alone in your flat every single day for weeks. God, that was a crap time, wasn't it? But I wanted this studio devising experience of writing and my God, I was gonna have it. So I turned my flat into a studio and I went about things in a different way. Instead of trying to make this story happen at a keyboard, I put on music and I got up and I danced. Then I followed the ideas that came out of that and turned that dance into painting. I cut stuff up, I wrote stuff down, I stuck it to the wall, I acted stuff out, I recorded it, I pretended to be things. I carried a rug across the Arctic that didn't make it into the show. Show. And it was so fun and liberating to write in this way. Of course, there was in the back of my head that little voice that was going, You're not being productive. The word count's not going up. But this wasn't about getting something made. This was about making something. It was about doing things in a new way. It was about creating a process that I could enjoy. The process that I needed at this time. And soon enough, I had a draft of this story. Yay! Which almost completely failed to tell the story I was trying to tell. Boo! Finding where it hurts. That first draft did contain one scene that worked. It described a very painful part of losing our mum, about the experience of watching someone die. And it was the only authentic moment in that whole draft. But this one little nugget of authenticity set a new bar for where I knew I wanted the rest of this thing to be. Even though my intention for this story was to look at some of that painful stuff, I realized I'd been circling it. I'd been talking around the subject rather than talking about the subject. Going towards pain doesn't feel right, does it? If you have a wound on your body, it's tender to the touch. And I th realized that part of me was afraid of going towards that, afraid of more pain, and also afraid of exposing that to other people and feeling vulnerable. I began to wonder though that maybe finding the most potent and meaningful center for this story was a matter of asking myself the question, where does it hurt? I know that one of the reasons I make things is to meet a need that isn't being met otherwise. And one of the most profound needs that we'll have in life is to heal ourselves. Letting people in. Even when it's crap. Even though I knew how and why I wanted to tell this story, I couldn't get it out. It was like it was, stuck in my throat and I felt alone with it. Lockdown meant I couldn't get into a room with other people to figure this out. I realized that I'd gone as far as I could on my own. I reached out online to find a collaborator. I found a dramaturg to work with to help me shape the story. I felt so nervous on our first call together. I hadn't shared like the meat of what I was trying to do with anyone before. And that critical voice 
came in. You're being self-indulgent. No one wants to hear your story. You haven't even been through anything that bad. Other people have it far worse. What are you whining about? The dramaturg took me and what I was trying to do seriously and it felt so good to hear that, yes, this is a worthwhile thing to be doing. It's funny, isn't it? Like we make things because we want to share something, because we want to be seen. But when it comes to it, the most difficult thing you can do at the beginning of a project is to share with someone else for the first time, especially when it's unfinished and falling far short of what you hope it will eventually be when it's done. I used to think the process was, okay, I'll make something brilliant and shiny and perfect and then I'll release it out into the world and that will be the beginning of its journey. But now I realise that the process is share the work as you go. That is the beginning of it going out into the world. That first sharing takes courage. It's the beginning of letting people in. Getting funding. I mean, asking for help. I now had a script and I was allowed outside. I was ready to stage this show. I was going to level up my theatre making. I was going to surround myself with a crack team of theatre makers who I could learn from. And to do that, I was going to need cash. So I applied for project funding from Arts Council England. And I did not get it. Hooray! Yeah, it was disappointing not being able to fully fund a project. But the act of trying to do so meant I was doing something that was far more useful. I was asking for help. Asking for help hasn't always come easy to me. The more I need something or someone, the harder it feels to put myself out there. I think that's about being vulnerable too. I now have a useful belief that I try to hold on to. It's okay for me to ask for help. And whatever someone's response, that has to be okay too. And the universe doesn't owe me anything. The act of saying, I'm over here and I'm trying to do this thing, makes it far more likely that aid will come your way. In developing the show, I had to reach out to friends because I realised I couldn't do it on my own. Hey, it's Paul. Wondering if you're free for a couple of hours to come to a room above a pub so I can read you a script that I've written about grief and loss and then I can ask you what you think about it. Hello? Putting myself out there led to unexpected gifts like spending more time with supportive friends and finding the person I wanted to direct the show. Staying safe. From day one, it felt important to find the right collaborators for this project. I was trying to tell a really personal story and that felt very exposing. I knew that to do that well, I needed to feel safe in the process. It was my responsibility to make sure I wasn't doing something that I wasn't ready to do yet. Yeah, telling this story was about trying to make sense of things and maybe do some healing, but it wasn't supposed to be therapy. I'd done loads of that. When I was reaching out to people to put together this funding application, I met the theatre maker, Laura Muggridge. And I knew that I wanted her to direct the show. I knew that she would be able to hold a safe space for us to work in. And because she's fun. Feeling safe in the creative process isn't just applicable when you're telling really personal stories. Feeling safe when you're creating helps you feel braver to take risks to fail. Working with Laura helped me understand this story and some of my experiences in a new way. Together, we were soon ready to put this show in front of people. Giving it away. My Heart as a Spark was first performed at Brighton Fringe in 2022. We had around 120 people come see the show, despite my fears that no one was going to show up. My other fears included people showing up, but thinking it was crap. Putting on a show is like trying to control reality for a couple of hours. We all agree that we're going to come together at a particular time in a particular place, and someone has created a world and structured a story to lead people through an experience. But all the rehearsal and preparation only allows you to control things so far. The outcome is never guaranteed. And if it was, where's the fun in that? A friend of mine once told me that when you're holding space for other people, the outcome of that is 20% what you bring to the room, 70% what other people bring to the room, and 10% is grace. At some point, you have to let the thing go. You have to let it be what it's gonna be. A few months earlier, we'd shared the work in progress first 10 minutes of the show at a scratch night. Afterwards, I was surprised that three or four people came up to me and shared their experiences of loss and grief. I think I've been so caught up in my nerves about performing and being good that I'd forgotten actually one of the reasons I wanted to make this thing in the first place. I wanted to share a story that might move people. Letting the work go meant accepting it's not about you anymore. Or at least it's not only about you anymore. We make things because we don't want to be on our own with something. We want someone else to go, yeah, I see that too. I feel that too. Making lemonade. 
I wanted to tell a story about grief and love and loss and how you bounce back from all of that. And I was trying to find an answer to the question, how does something good come of your world falling apart? Laura has this idea that the show that you're making is always about trying to make the show that you're making. Performing My Heart is a Spark with an audience was my way of trying to make some lemonade out of some lemons, thinking that maybe other people might need that lemonade. Our show ends with joy and with hope and connection. And it's a wonderful thing to be part of, sharing this story about some of the stuff that we're all going to experience as humans. We're all going to lose someone. We're all going to find ourselves in a place of despair. But even from some of the darkest places in life, you can still find your way back to joy and hope again. Making this show and sharing it with other people is how something good comes of my world falling apart. I've been really touched by how people have received it in the show as the story is being shared between us and then afterwards in speaking with people and hearing how what I've shared connects with their experience. It feels really special. So recently I looked back at the intention I set myself when I first began this project to unleash my artistic self in a successful solo show that delightfully and honestly shares my journey in a way that moves, connects and helps people. And three years later, by not giving up, that's exactly what happened. I'm really proud of that. So that's what I learned. And I hope there's something there that's of value to you in your life or what you're making. My Heart as a Spark went on to win the Audience Choice Award for Best Event at Brighton Fringe, which was an amazing way to cap off our run. Afterwards, I felt freaking great. I felt ready to dive back into other creative projects I was doing, like my novel, get those done, get those out into the world. The only problem, of course, is that I was exhausted and again, on the verge of burnout. Hello, my old friend. To find out how I solved that, watch what happened next.